Hey guys, Steve Trang, Real Estate Disruptors. I wanted to make sure you guys heard about my new book, Active Listening 2.0. I wrote it because you guys have been mentioning some of the challenges you guys have as far as talking to homeowners. Now, please be sure to watch this whole video. We got four giveaways that we're gonna be talking about at the very end. Yeah, see we real estate disruptors. Can't nobody touch us. Active Listening 2.0, overcoming stalls and objections by asking the right questions at the right times. Why did I call it Active Listening 2.0? So here's the thing, right now in the 21st century, consumers know way more than they ever did before. Back in the 20th century, the only way to find out about a product was to deal with a salesperson. And now, if you want to uh, find out anything, the salesperson is no longer the gatekeeper trying to keep information between you and a product. When a consumer calls, by the time they've picked up the phone, they already know 90% about the product, about you, and about the industry. So that's the reason why it's really important to be a great communicator, which is what we're talking about, active listening. You need to understand, comprehend, really figure out what they want, and then figure out whether you can create a solution that solves their problem. So as I said, active listening, becoming a better listener will separate you from the average amateur salesperson. So what are the chapters we're gonna be talking about in here? Uh, we're gonna be talking about uncovering meaning and intent. Why is this important? The ability to really understand where the person's coming from, where the consumer's coming from, trying to see the world through their eyes, feel how they feel, understand greatly the fears and uh, uh, challenges, the concerns that they're experiencing. If you can understand it better, then you've been able to develop business rapport. On top of that, if you can figure out really clearly the solution that they're looking for, now they've entrusted you to provide that solution. Next part is establishing the rules. One of the greatest objections that we hear all the time is I need to think about it. And the reason why you're getting I need to think about it is because you're not properly establishing the rules of the meeting. So what you're gonna do after learning about establishing the rules, you're gonna avoid I need to think about it. I need to talk to an attorney. I need to talk to an accountant. The next chapter we're gonna be talking about is extracting pain and motivation. So what this is about is really understanding why they are compelled, why they talk to you. Now, there are people that think they know why they talk to you. For example, uh, you might be talking to someone that's facing foreclosure, but intellectually, yeah, they're in foreclosure. It's no big deal. But how is that foreclosure really impacting things at home? How is it impacting uh, the relationship, the marriage? How is it impacting uh, that they've got a car that might be repossessed? Maxed out credit cards, dealing with the HOA. When you're facing foreclosure, it's not just a foreclosure. There are a lot of things going on at the same time, and we show you how to get the prospect to actually not just convey what's going on, but to share and experience what's actually going on in their home. And after that, we're gonna be talking about extracting price. And extracting price, what happens is there's always this dance where we're trying to figure out, you say the number first, no, I'll say, no you say the number first, and you're just kind of going back and forth. So we show you as the professional how to get the consumer to say the number first, what they feel comfortable paying. In the following chapter, we're gonna be talking about how to extract the time frame, how to get them to tell you what their time frame is. Because if you ask them how soon you wanted to make a decision, what you're always gonna hear is, I've got time and I'm in no rush. So what we, what we wanna do is get them to tell you how quickly they wanna make a decision, how urgent the situation is. And in the next chapter, extracting the decision makers, we wanna find out who can possibly screw up your deal, right? You don't want to have a situation where you've got a great rapport, you got a great conversation, and somebody comes out from left field and screws up your deal. So we're gonna be talking about how to extract all the other decision makers so that you don't get blindsided during this transaction. In the chapter confirming terms, we're just gonna wrap up and confirm everything we heard in the entire appointment, in the whole meeting, okay? So we're not trying to um, learn anything new. We're not trying to share anything new. All we're doing is we're confirming 
why they agreed to meet with you, why they need to make a purchase or sell. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, confirming the price that they share with you, confirming the time frame, and all the other decision makers. That's all we're doing. When we're confirming the terms, we're just wrapping up the sale very smoothly, very easily, without this great tension and conflict. And then before we leave, what we got to do is prevent remorse because the worst thing that can happen is after you leave, they call you and change their mind. So we're going to teach you in this book how to prevent remorse from the prospect after they've signed the document and signed the contract with you. And in the very last chapter, we're going to be talking about scorching the earth, which is talking about, let's just say you don't get the deal. Hey, you're not going to bat a thousand. I wish you would. I wish I would. I wish we all could. But the fact of the matter is you can't bat a thousand. So what, what do we do? Before we leave, we scorch the earth. We make it really hard for anyone to follow up, follow up in our footsteps. Uh, metaphorically, I like to describe this as leaving landmines under the welcome mats, under the sofa cushions, and in the kitchen cabinets for anyone that's walking in after us. So by the time you finish this book, you'll have a great grasp of how to extract meaning and intent establish the rules, um, extract the pain and motivation, the time frame, the price, the decision makers, how to tie up the meeting smoothly. And if you can't get the deal for whatever reason, scorch in the earth so no one else gets the deal. All right, you made it this far. Thank you for watching this video. So I, like I said in the very beginning, we've got four giveaways. So giveaway number one, we've got the perfect seller appointment checklist. Now, for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, we sell this checklist for $97. So for anyone that participates in what we talk about, you're gonna get our perfect seller appointment checklist. This is what my team uses and how we measure our salespeople on a quality of their appointments. If you can master this one skill, you should be closing 20, 30, maybe 50% more of your appointments. The second thing we're giving away is a Zoom group call. What we're going to do for everyone that participates, we're going to be doing one call where we're going to answer all of your questions related to the book. So we're going to have all the people that have purchased the book follow the process. We're going to do one call. Where we're going to answer all your questions unfiltered. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to be recording the audio version of this book, which we're obviously going to be selling for full price. But for anyone that participates, you'll be getting a copy of our audio book before we put it anywhere else for free. And last but not least, for the first 20 people that submit, we're going to be sending you a signed copy of Active Listening 2.0. So what do you have to do? It's really simple. We're going to post a link to the book on Amazon. And what you want to do is you're going to purchase it. It's only 99 cents on Kindle 15 for the hard copy. That 99 cents is only for 14 days. So for anyone that purchased the book, you're going to upload a receipt that we're going to send you the link on JotForm. And once you've completed the JotForm, you'll immediately get access to our perfect seller appointment. And then you're going to get our audiobook as soon as it's ready, as well as a link to our Zoom call, which we're going to be holding in about two weeks. So guys, that's it. That's the book, Active Listening 2.0. Hope you guys check it out. Like I said, the link will be down below in the description. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, what would really help me is a five-star review or really any honest review. Any reviews would be appreciated. So guys, please check it out and I uh, hope you guys love it. Well, you know, we call it active listening 2.0 because one of the most important things uh, today is when you're talking to the prospect, they really want to feel heard and understood. Uh, there's just a human element. We all, we all want to be appreciated. And the best way to feel heard and understood is actually listen to them. And so a lot of what we talk about in there is how to actively listen. And, you know, that term's been thrown around before, but they don't really talk about how. And so we want to talk about how to actively listen to a prospect. Uh, sure. So when we're talking about meaning and intent, what we're talking about is 
The way people communicate, they don't communicate how they want to communicate. They communicate the way we've been trained as a society to communicate. Uh, the example I always like to use is if I call my wife and say, hey, honey, I'm going to the casino with the guys. You okay with that? I'm sleeping in the doghouse. Like, there's no way around it, right? That's the question I want to ask. The question I really ask is, hey, honey, do you have anything going on on Friday night? And that's just the reality. Or, you know, um, for those of you guys that are married or, or have long-term relationships, when your wife or girlfriend tells you she has nothing to wear, the answer is not to go in her closet and point out all the clothes she has to wear. Because I have nothing wear to wear does not mean I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear is very well qualified by the occasion, the outfit, the spring season or fall season, a wedding or a cocktail. I, I didn't know all these things, right? For me, it's, you don't have anything to wear, you don't have anything to wear. I'm very literal. And so we're gonna learn. And it's great also, not just for sales, but relationships. Um, another one is, you may have experienced this before, is when you're, you screwed up and you asked her, are you okay? And she says, I'm fine. Was she really fine? You knew she wasn't fine. And this is, we're gonna teach you how to separate the words from the body language when you're dealing with consumers. It's interesting that we, uh, establishing the rules is, is so critical. And the reason why establishing rules is critical is that both parties need to operate from the same set of rules. And the, you know, growing up as a kid, when you're playing kickball, you could create the bases, right? You could say this was out of balance and if you're not allowed to throw it between the, uh, uh, under the legs or you know, beneath the hip, whatever, all these rules. But the importance is we all, all need to create the same rules. And if you don't create the same rules, you can have a completely different agenda and setting expectations is so critical in sales. And if your expectations going to the meeting are completely different than the uh, prospect's expectations going to the meeting, you're gonna have this mismatch, this um, uh, miswire and, or cross wires and then both people are gonna end the appointment with uh, just dissatisfaction. So if you and the prospect can come across and agree on the same set of rules on the expected outcomes of the meeting, then it's a lot less stressful for you and, and, and the prospect. And what's really surprising is this tension that arises throughout the meeting goes away when you actually establish the rules in the very beginning of the meeting. Of course, you've got to ask questions to extract pain and motivation. And the key here is asking questions. Um, you know, something that we've taught before is you want to get paid like a doctor, you better ask questions like a doctor. You know, if you were to go in today to, get, uh, to talk to your doctor about some back pain, and he says, hey, why don't you come back at three o'clock? We're gonna operate. Are you good to go? No, you're gonna feel like, hey, this guy just gave me a solution. He doesn't even understand my pain, right? Versus the doctor asks you, tell me more about your back pain. How long has it been going on? What have you done about it? Did that work? You know, can you tell me the last time that you had this terrible pain? As he's asking you questions, you feel heard and understood. And as you feel heard and understood, you're gonna be more likely to go with his diagnosis. And so when we're talking about extracting pain and motivation, we're asking those same questions like you're a doctor. Absolutely, we're gonna, when you're done with the, with the book, you will learn how to uncover what's really going on underneath the surface to the real pain, the real challenges that they're hoping you the professional can solve. You know, it's really interesting because in every negotiation, and this is the way we've been our whole lives, this is the way we grew up because sales has been around for thousands of years before you know we were born. Uh, so the problem you always have is everyone has this idea of how you should negotiate. And the idea of how you should negotiate is you put everyone against each other and have them bid against each other and whoever has the highest bid wins. And that's very logical if you're trying to buy a car. You know, when you're going to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, when I bought my Honda Accord many, many years ago, I just went online and I just went through all the Honda dealers and I just had them bid against each other. And if you're buying a Honda Accord, it doesn't matter which dealership you're buying from because you're just buying the product. 
But for us in our industry, uh, we're not all the same. We're, we are not a commodity. So if you're trying to go in there and just shop on price, you should lose. You should never be the highest bidder. What you should do, you should learn, once we talk about uncovering pain, now you should get them to say the number first. And in the book, we talk about how to get them to share their number first. And now that they share their number first, you get to decide, do I want to pay that price or not? And that's really all there is to the price chapter. So Active Listening 2.0 will help you become a more effective cold caller. But here's the thing about cold calling. You will never grow to love it. This is something that is always going to suck. No, you just can't, there's no way to make cold calling sexy, okay? But what we can do is we can prepare you, we can teach you what to say, how to say it, so that you are very well equipped. And if you're equipped, you'll feel more confident doing it, right? So you'll be more confident, you'll be more well equipped, you'll be better on the phones. But if you're asking whether I can make you enjoy cold calling, no, I will never help you enjoy cold calling. And cold calling is just one of those things you do it because you have to. It's like eating your vegetables. So it's really amazing when you're using a third party store, it can really help the prospect understand that you understand where they're coming from. And so we're gonna teach in, in the last chapter, uh, use the power of third party stories, how to really convey um, what, what, what's going on in their world, but also convey what's happened to other people. Because what happens is you can't tell anybody anything. Once you start telling as a salesperson, you come across as salesy, you come across as selling. So we don't tell. There's no point in trying to educate somebody because in the back of their mind, well, of course you say that, you're a salesperson. But if you can actually come up with a relatable third party story with another client that's gone through the same exact situation, now they can put themselves in that other person's situation and now they can understand the de potential dilemmas that they may experience if they don't go with you. So uh, using a third party story is our way of conveying that we understand and conveying to them the challenges that they may experience if they're not working with someone like us. So the power of scorching the earth is, yeah, it creates a competitive advantage for us. But here's the thing, because if we have other people actually get upset with us for teaching about scorching the earth, but there's nothing in the scorching the earth policy, the, the questions that we teach the prospects to ask uh, anyone that comes in after us, there's nothing in there, nothing in there that I wouldn't tell my mom. Nothing in there that I wish I didn't know. Okay, so when we're talking about scorching the earth, all we're doing is raising the ethical and moral standards of the industry. So we're gonna talk about, hey, make sure whoever you're working with can do this because if they can't, are they really there to serve you? And so Scorching the Earth may not be the most popular chapter, in fact, might be the most controversial chapter, but at the end of the day, there's nothing in there I wouldn't tell my mom. And I don't think anyone that's read, after they read the book would say that they wouldn't wanna tell their mom. You know, uh, when we started the podcast, uh, coming up now on three years, the, from from episode one, what we said is we wanted to create a hundred millionaires. That's always been my passion. Something I've always been, you know, something I've always wanted to do. And so it's really important to me that we help as many people as we can. And the way we help as many people as we can is through, you know, taking something that we charge thousands of dollars for and put it into a book for ninety nine cents on the Kindle. Um, the unplugged. It's just really wanting someone to take the advice from someone that's done it, doing it, and someone that wants to potentially help a family member, you know, or a close friend navigate this industry. Because this is, make no mistake about it, a brutal industry. This is cutthroat. And I've got no problems with it being a cutthroat industry. I think that's great. But for someone that, you know, wants to uh, learn with us, I am happy to share uh, what's working for us in this industry. You should buy this book 
if you are not closing as many appointments as you think you should. If you're going on appointments and you're walking out thinking, I should have had that, but I missed something and I don't know what it was, this book will help you with that. Yeah, see we real estate disruptors Can't nobody touch us And yeah, we about to give you game